How many cows you got to milk this morning, Jeremiah? Two cows. Two. No Jessica this morning, huh? She usually doesn't come out in the morning milking. She does the evening? Yeah, we kind of Sweet. give each other breaks. That's smart. Like I'll machine milk this morning and then she'll hand milk hope in the evening. The horse. Whose idea was that? Uh, I'd say it probably is a joint idea, but it probably was more my idea. <laughs> You're the cowboy, huh? Yeah, well, I wouldn't call me a cowboy, but. What's that? It's called a cow can't kick. Mm. Some of the worst marketing and probably. That's the name of it. Yeah, and they spelled it all with K's. It's just, it's Ooh, a great. You cannot <laughs> acronym that. <laughs> no. KK. It's a great product. It's just like, I'm just like, why would you do that? Like, it's not even the right lettering for the correct spelling. So I don't know. It's a kick bar. Essentially, it's better than a hobble. It just puts a little bit of pressure on the nerves that run right by the udder, which keeps her from picking her foot up. And since we started using it, we don't have any more spilled milk. It's gonna hold your milking. Yeah, they have a belly milker, so it hangs underneath them. So that way the, like on previous milkers, the line from where the cups are back to the tank are usually pretty long. So this one, it keeps them short, so it's easy to clean. Uh, so yeah, you don't have good. to like scrub out the lines and like that's dry them out and stuff. It's just real simple. <laughs> He's nodding his head behind you. Oh, that's you? What we need. Yeah. yeah. See, this is the line. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to get a couple of cows that are going to do three gallons a day. That's going to be helpful milking six or more gallons a day, huh, Jenna? Because I'm the one doing yeah. it. You don't want to milk it by hand like Grandpa? No. Grandpa Actually, milked 15 by hand. Yeah, but I guarantee Twice you, a day. I guarantee you the teats <laughs> on those cows were not that small. Oh, uh, yeah. See, this is why we looked into a milker. Oh, yeah. Because she's a great cow, but her teats are tiny, especially the back ones. It's ready to go. I'm going to take that. So all you got to clean out is these guys. Yeah. And then you just going to turn. Let it catch up. You're just doing two at a time? No, I'm just, you gotta do one at a time or it loses pressure. Mm. Because you know what I'm saying? That when I put press down in the beginning, I was adding, making the vacuum. So if you pick them up all at the same time, you actually lose your pressure. That's the Wilder Steel film crew for their show on Abundance Plus. This is an essential oil based fly spray. Does it work? Yep. Now, then you know your chemical based stuff will work like all day. This works about half the day. Now you said Jessica does not use the machine in the afternoon. Why is that? She likes uh, hand milk. I'm gonna say to you, I'm gonna ask you this. What about the romance? Just quietly getting some work done in the morning, some cool in the morning. What about the romance? Yeah, the romance is kind of out the window with that. Oh, no, no, that's very romantic to me. <laughs> See, because my hands aren't doing this. And so like, it really warms my heart and makes me feel special to not have to handle yeah. it. I really appreciate okay. the milk commission. Yeah. Now, Jessica, on the other hand, yeah, she comes out she's the wordy poet. And so she's like, I miss you know, getting my hands yep. in there. And I'm like, okay. okay. This Dang. Is a, this is a bigger one for. This yeah, that's a boy, a gallon and a half you got right there. Yeah, she's in actually five minutes. She's down in production, I think, because she's in heat. Yeah, they go through a. They go up and down. So she's on a down. Like that's actually about a gallon less than what I've been yeah. getting consistently. But like I said, it fluctuates a little bit. Where's your bull at? I don't have a bull right now. What are you gonna do? For these two, I've got a guy with sexed Jersey semen who's gonna do AI okay. on both of them. What do you guys do with all this milk, Jeremiah? We've gotten creative. We're going to make a lot of butter, uh, cheese. We've been giving it away to families, local families that can appreciate you know, raw milk. What next, Jeremiah? Uh, well, we got to get the milk in and bottle it. We've got to get it cold. First time driving a four-wheeler, Jeremiah wanted him over there to help haul the milk and supply stuff in. Just before lunch with Jessica herself. I was here in January. Yes. And already there's compost piles. 
There's layer chickens on yep. the rice. Got some. That's There's the next stage of brooding layers and ducks. The greenhouse, greenhouse though. Where do you want to take us? Um, I guess we'll. People go are here. gonna want to see that. Crazy. This is my favorite place. Yeah. So kind of working little bits at a time. So we've got like this little strip of planted garden, but we'll spread <laughs> out. Um, I had all my fruit trees over here. We just moved them. And uh, yeah, so we did the greenhouse. It's been in an order of importance. Like we had to get the greenhouse yeah. to get the seed started, to get the gardens in. Makes so sense. priorities and just going down the list and what has to get done or else yeah. not get done. I saw this brand spanking new in episode seven, Wilder Still. Yeah, that was... It was seven, right? Direct. It wasn't eight, right? I think I it was seven. Yeah, okay. seven. Yeah, there was um, nothing there. We You've actually, already used it so much. yeah, we actually crunched mm. because the camera crew was coming for episode seven, and Jeremiah and Wes were out here that morning, like finishing putting the tip. <laughs> actually, the first thing I ever did with this greenhouse was shoot episode seven. Oh, that's that was funny. the very first thing. Yeah. Wait, Jeremiah and Wes, Wes from the shoot film yeah, crew. They, <laughs> no, Wes from the from oh, our friend. Yeah, oh, that's on, he's about. been on the show. Bearded so. Wes. Yes. Bearded was. <laughs> this is now very used. Uh, we started thousands of seeds in here, which are now at this point planted out. Um, kind of some scraggling stuff in here that'll be planted as we have more space nice. developed. But we got to get everything out of it here pretty soon because it's getting over 100 degrees in here. Yeah. Like as hot as it's been. Almost everything in here was started from seed. Almost. Nice. Say, actually, yeah, like 99. And it's all jamming. Yeah, How happy are you? Are you happy? I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Is this everything you thought it would be? Yes. Look. Look at it. Sassafras. She, but you see her eggs? She's got eggs under her. She keeps chasing me out of my garden. I'm like, listen, honey, we're going to have to work something out. <laughs> there they are. Okay, so what killders do is they try to lure you away by going and acting like they're hurt. So, like, watch. Watch your <gasps> Oh, she's yeah, like she's hurt. And she's she's getting She's crooked. Gonna lure me away. She's gonna act like she's hurt, so you can attack her. Yeah, and get away from her babies. She's sacrifice. acting like she's the sacrifice of a mother. <laughs> she's acting like she's easy to catch. Yeah. We put up two high tunnels, and one is more perennial focused, and one is like annual focused. So here, I did leave a space to be able to like these are my fruit trees, and we'll keep them under the shade cloth until we can plant them, as well as some other perennials. And then in here we've got rhubarb and we're going to do some artichokes and some ginger and other things that can grow kind of like perennials. And then down the middle is all citrus because we can actually grow that here with some protection. Nice. And this is where the pigs were. Yes. yes. She used... I, they were here when you were here probably. Yeah, you yeah. used the pigs. So they we were here in January. Two pens that were the exact footprint of these and we kept our pigs in them and they trashed the... They decimated it. And then you could put down your things. So how appreciative are you for this weed paper? I mean this uh, weed very much plastic. Appreciative. <laughs> you need to try this. <laughs> Don't What'd you him. say, Ben? But he said you need to try this. It's really great. It's All really right, good. Try it. Okay, it's very sour. Try so it, just Jenna. prepare yourself. It's called Calamondin. You're gonna have to tell me how it is. It's fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you have that? <laughs> Why do I have it? Okay, so very much too sour to eat on their own, but really uh -oh. good for using for flavoring with like like a lime. So you can make things with it. I put it all in my mouth. <laughs> I've told everybody. These are all chestnut trees that will oh, nice. cold stratified a bunch of chestnuts over the winter and planted these. And so these are trees that are gonna go up Jess, are you a crazy plant lady? <laughs> I don't know. What do you if think? You, if, you what have, do you think? <laughs> if you have hundreds of plants without a plan, <laughs> you might be a crazy plant lady. Maybe. You sound like Rebecca. I know. <laughs> Rebecca's greenhouse is like bursting at this point. I know. It is. We're going to start piling a lot of wood chips in here mm -hmm. and working towards building an orchard around this pond at the end of the season. Nice. Where are you going to get your wood chips? We've just put our name on all the local arborists mm. lists and nice. they call us and we just ask them like where they got them and hopefully they don't okay. have anything sprayed on them. Yeah. Maya bought this land without me seeing it. He came out here. How'd you feel about that? 
I mean, I That's knew he'd some make mega trust. Decision. Yeah, it was. It was an exercise in trust. Um, but he brought me back out in April. So he came in December. He brought me in April. And when we were here visiting, we planted this tree. So it's now over a year old because we've been here. This is why Ben likes it. It's your first yeah. tree you've ever planted. There's the famous uh, dock we all went fishing, I think. Well, there's still yep. episode two-ish. Yep. You're talking about the kids yep. following your lead. It's pretty cool looking at Wilder still and like the way that we've, I mean, we have this memory book yeah. of this first year here kind of talking about the process. I know. And being here now on the weekend of the big event. I know. It's pretty cool. The grand finale. It felt very far away when we started. Yes, when Jeremiah came down here and bought this, you were blind yeah. to it. Was this going to be a legacy property? Yes. Like forever in the family type of thing? Like you're going to be buried here? That's or was this home. just going to be, oh, we could flip it and no. find our dream home one day? We really wanted a place to like come and stay forever. Like we wanted deep roots. Mm. And so this property was a little smaller than we were looking for but it was so usable uh, being mm -hmm. that it's, it was all cleared and all of that stuff. There was a lot of open land around it. So the hope is, is down the road to be able to acquire more. When you have a lot of kids, you know, like, and hope to have them close, we'd like to have more land down the road. You unloading it a little bit? And now we get the cooler out. We're about to take Jess on a ride uh, to see her shop. But I, I, she's never ridden in a Tesla before. <laughs> hey, you're like me, you can't find a door handle. <laughs> You figured it out though. A little too fancy for this. You have to talk to it. You say, open the door. <laughs> Look, is there a face code recognition. or something? You didn't recognize your face. Wow, this no is fancy. Right? Look at this. This is the key. Oh my goodness. That's a and, and you hold it up to the car to unlock it. He's like, that's not a car. A he key. said no. <laughs> it's like a hotel key. You ready, Jess? I don't know. Oh my God, just. <laughs> <laughs> First impression of the Tesla. It's pretty nice. <laughs> I feel honestly like I looked back and saw Ben sitting on that solid white seat. I feel like we're too dirty to no, be allowed. No, no, no. This know? is not a farmer's <laughs> car. This is not a farmer's car. I see my little farm kid back there looking. Hopefully the cyber truck is gray or something yeah. inside. It's black. <laughs> oh, it's black. black. Okay. That'll do that. That'll hide it. So Jess, you said the town is dying or was dying. Why are you attracted to a dying? Why is that an opportunity for you? Well, for this job? I would say like it was very much dead 15 years ago and there's been growth that's happening that's very commercial and for me being able to come into a place I see all of those empty buildings not as economic failure but as economic opportunity because a lot of people are going to be able to come in and open a boutique or a cafe or a donut shop or whatever natural pet food store and all these little things that a town of 5,000 not, might not be able to support, but if we're serving as an anchor point, all those empty spaces are opportunities for other people's dreams. Because, like, I mean, you know, when you have a YouTube channel and an online business, like, you don't really have to open a brick and mortar. Like, we don't have to do that. We could have a, enough success just where we are, but by doing this, what? there's multiplication possible know. for other people. So the dying town gives lots of space. <laughs> There's a gym. Yep, so this is actually our building right here. The white one or the... The orange one. Orange one. Ha ha ha. Show park? Um, go around back. We'll have okay. my keys for the back door. And then that's closed. That's a little wedding chapel. And then these are empty. And then those, there's like a hardware store and like an antique shop. And there are I'm several at. empty buildings. You have dreams for that house right there. Oh well, yeah, I own it. You own that? You <laughs> yeah. got it. Well, then can we go look at it? Um, we can't get in right now, but it's got, we can walk around it. But we Let's can park back, well, you can okay. park back here and we'll walk over. But you want to have a little homestead there. A little coffee like, shop. Coffee shop, yeah. So where what? people can come and kind of see. And then this is actually the roasting building. Yeah. What? All right, we gotta so, see this. Yeah, pull in here and park in this back alley. I found Rebecca yeah, in FaceTime. So, <laughs> basically, we have the main building, which is the it's the Carolina Homestead Exchange, which is the 
store that is gonna have like homesteading stuff and I'll take you in there in a second. But this is the alley behind it and we actually, this is part of our property here. And my vision here, we'll have the roasting house which will have like a pop-up coffee shop out of the back. And my hope is, is that we'll be able to do like these farmer's markets and these events where we have all this outdoor space for foot traffic. That eventually once phase two is done, we can run into the coffee house property and we'll have all this foot traffic area. Nice. So that'll be really cool. Second. What about this, this glass here? You gonna change this? No, I wanna keep that. So right now we have to have like the, like we have to have all this like remediated and whatever, By whatever it's called. Yeah, professionals. That's, that's those removers. Yeah, because this was actually a burger joint in like the 50s. Wow. The 60s, so yeah. But we'll and this is going to be where you're going to roast coffee. Roast coffee. And then we'll do like a little pop-up coffee shop in the back where you can come up to this window and like we'll have all of this for foot traffic. Hey, Next up, this is, is going to be a mercantile? Yes. The mercantile. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us what you're gonna keep, what you're gonna Um so Don't. we had them leave all the old fixtures because it just to be able to use some of them. We probably won't use but This is cool how they had the outlets. Yeah, so this was a hardware store and you can kind of see that in these fixtures. So a lot of them we won't use, but some of these have been in here for like multiple generations. Like check out those old yes, bins. How cool are those? And then like these old tables, that nail bin. Look at this view of the town. You see this a bustling town. Hey, You're gonna yeah. help. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna see every <laughs> shop open. This oh really? The chicken section where we sell chicken nice. supplies. And, what else are you gonna sell here? Um So you're gonna so, sell chicks here actual. Yeah, that's the plan. Oh nice. For, you know, Murray McMurray. You can't work with Murray McMurray and not have chicks for sale. <laughs> so we'll have our, you know, days that we have chicks in the spring. But we want to have chicken keeping supplies, a dairy, so like a place you can go in person and buy a stainless steel bucket or nice. cheese cultures or, um, you know, organic or natural mastitis treatment and stuff like that. Because, you nice. know, you can't just go buy that stuff anywhere. It's like a mass general store, but with more of a farm yeah. approach to it. For homesteaders. So we probably won't have tons of like, you know, we'll have some tools that are specific to certain jobs, but mostly it's going to be home. What are you going to put in this? I don't know yet, but I love it so Something's much. Something's got to go in that. Something good. That's what I'm going to put in it. All right. So my favorite part. So back here is going to be the classroom. Ooh. And in here is where we're going to have, like, imagine the biology tables from eighth grade, you know, like, we're going to yeah. have tables and a kitchen set up. And so you can come and sign up for classes and learn to start seeds or learn to do sourdough. Here we have a house that she will use to model a backyard homestead. You have a little homestead back here? Yep. Teach that. Well, I, t I shot two shows today and I don't think I concluded either one of them. So I'm gonna do it here. Forget if you, if you see the same angle, same outfit at the end of two different videos. So here we go. The first one where we toured with Jess and Jeremiah, an amazing couple doing absolutely amazing things as you can see from this video. If you don't already, I encourage you to follow them on YouTube at Roots and Refuge. I don't think you'll regret it. If you like and are inspired by people doing really big things. That's Jess and Jeremiah.